Well, most of you that watch this channel will know exactly what's going to come up in the next few minutes. But for anyone new to this channel that's looking at this video, you may wonder what the hell's going on. All will be revealed. Well, as many of you will know, that a video of mine that starts like this means that it's time for another wander around Clipson Old Quarter, part of Sherwood Forest, in an attempt to survey for female glowworms. Not out as yet, and that's the aim of this particular video. It's the 27th of May today, and tomorrow being the 28th is one of the two dates that I gave where female glowworms could possibly make the first appearance here at Clipson Old Quarter about a fortnight ago. The first date proved fruitless and despite numerous checks there's been no sign of any females. We're into a very warm and dry period of weather again. There's no sign of any rain and conditions here in the forest are indeed drying up very very quickly and plants are starting to wilt especially on the track sides. But it should be a female glowworm around any date. It's getting quite late actually in terms of first female dates and so it'll be interesting to see whether one turns up tonight or one does indeed turn up tomorrow night on one of those two dates that are predicted. But basically what it involves is me going up through a number of sections. This is presently section O. I'll put a map in here and take you through the route for those that don't know it. But I'll go up through O, then I'll go along sections L and M and then retrace my steps and come back through M and L. And then we go up K and J up to the centre tree. And then finally we walk down the grass strip sections of sections D, C, B and A and end up pretty much back where I am now. So we'll see whether May the 27th is the first night that glowing females turn out. Well, nothing in section O. I'm just about to start and go down sections L and M, which are flat in the lowest part of the site. And of course, on arrival, we have a night jar cheering. It's the most exotic sound of any wildlife in the UK, as far as I'm concerned. And the planet Venus appearing from behind the cloud. But what an accompaniment to an evening walking around the forest, the cheering night jar is. Well, good news is I've got one. Funnily enough, where I've just done the last piece to camera, she was on the corner just a few yards from where I was crouched down recording the night jar. I've gone up sections L and M, just coming back down, and there is this female right at the junction with sections L and the bottom of section K. Absolutely brilliant. So, May the 27th, the first female glowworm, and she's in grass as well. It's not in tall grass. That's brilliant. I'm so chuffed with that. And she's moving quite a bit. See if I can get just a little bit better footage from directly above, but. cracking things and if you want to know what angle she's at head end is to the left of where the glowing plates are with which she's just starting to move a little bit 
so she's positioned from left to right horizontally in this particular shot. She's quite active. I haven't shone a torch on her yet because I didn't want to, but I won't be surprised if this hasn't got a male. So I'm going to have to put a light on her and we'll have a look. And here's that female, just sat clinging to the underside of that leaf of ribwort plantain. And now the night jar almost overhead. That's very close. But what a remarkable insect the glowworm is. You can have your real rare beetles, and I do like a rare, rarity, I must admit. But what the glowworm has above most rare insects is the ability to instill an interest in young children, an interest in natural history and wildlife that maybe even if they don't pick up straight away and take up at that interest, they may well do in later life. And putting a glowworm, a female glowworm that's in full glow like this one, in a child's hand, it not only lights the child's hands up, but also that child's face, they marvel at how an insect can create its own light. That's the power of glowworms. And we'll withdraw the light. But what a marvellous sight, accompanied by the most marvellous sound. Well, I'm now at the top of section D. I've come up sections K and J after recording that first glowworm of 2023, and I'm about to go down sections D, C, B and A, which are the long grass strip here at Clipston Old Quarter. It's doubtful whether there'll be another glowworm. And to be honest, I can't remember two glowworms on the first night before. Usually you'll get one female appear, sometimes a second one the night after, but usually a couple of days after that. But who knows how the season is going to develop. It's certainly going to be low numbers again. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but be nice if we could turn one up in the grass strip although i'm not expecting so with so few larvae being found and so few females recorded in the grass strip in 2022 but you never know this insect the glowworm it keeps rewriting the books when we think we know it it tells us something else so down through section d c b and a it is Well, the skies have now cleared. A lovely half moon up there, and you may well be able to hear the oncoming traffic of Peafield Lane, which means that I'm quite close to the car now, about another 50 yards of section A. Nothing through the grass strip, no sign of any glowworms in there at all, and that's no surprise. But to be honest, it was quite a surprise to find that female this evening at the bottom of sections K and where it joins section L. Very pleasing, always nice to find the first female glowworm of any year. It's quite often the first female that's recorded here is the first one seen in the UK and that's purely because a lot of people don't bother going out looking for glowworms until well into June and they should because most sites will produce early females. So more successful nights to come with more glowworms than just the one tonight but at least it's a female that starts the season off <laughs> 